headquarters of Teleso English in Havana, Cuba. This is from the south and I'm Katrina Goss. The high-level general debate of the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly continues this Monday as heads of state and government offer their annual addresses. Friday saw the high-level dialogue on energy, a collateral event that saw the participation of 100 member states and brought together heads of state and government as well as business leaders, foundations and international civil society and youth organisations to mobilise commitments and actions in terms of green energy. Heads of state and government have been addressing the General Assembly since last week, expressing their main concerns regarding the challenges ahead, especially in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic and the ongoing struggle to combat climate change. The 76th General Debate also addresses pressing issues affecting the international community, such as vaccination rollout, preparedness ahead of future health crises and the rising gap between rich and poor, developed and developing nations. And we continue with our live coverage of the high-level debate of the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly. We now go live to the statements of the representative of Guinea. I express to you my sincere congratulations on your brilliant election to the presidency of the 76th session of the UN General Assembly. I have the firm conviction that our assembly will benefit greatly from your wealth of experience and you can count on my delegation's full support for the accomplishment of your important mission. Your predecessor, His Excellency Mr. Volkan Bozkir, and his team deserve our well-earned tribute for the effectiveness with which they led the work of the 75th session of our shared organization. I would thus like to reiterate my sincere congratulations and encouragements to Mr. Antonio Gutierrez for his re-election to the post of Secretary General of the United Nations. This is an opportunity to express our great appreciation for the dexterity with which he carries out his delicate mission. Since taking the helm of our organization, he has continued to promote multilateralism to make it a tool that cannot be done without in the management of global affairs. We reiterate Guinea's firm support for him in the reform process that he has undertaken. Mr. President, the theme chosen for this 76th session Building resilience through hope to recover from COVID-19, rebuild sustainably, respond to the needs of the planet, respect the rights of people and revitalize the United Nations requires that we engage with it in multiple ways. This session of the General Assembly, just like the previous one, takes place at a unique time marked by the resurgence of the COVID-19 pandemic with the appearance of new variants which continue to have a negative impact on the public health situation and the lives of our populations as well as the economies of our states which already face the slowdown of international trade, a drop in investments, a reduction in commodity prices and also scarce sources of financing. This situation considerably slowed down the pace of implementing the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda, jeopardizing what has already been achieved. COVID-19 has demonstrated that the world is dependent on technology and digital connectivity, which more than half of the world's population does not have access to. This state of affairs increases inequalities, undermines resilience among the most vulnerable and requires urgent measures be taken, including restructuring the international financial architecture, building digital infrastructure and the production and equal distribution of vaccines. It is in this context that the Republic of Guinea welcomes measures that the financial institutions and specialized organizations, including the IMF, the World Bank, the WHO and the WTO have taken to alleviate public debt, allocate 650 billion US dollars dollars in the form of special drawing rights and the financing of the COVAX mechanism which must take into account the disproportional distribution of the impact of COVID-19 on states. Mr. President, like other countries, the Republic of Guinea has not sat still in the face of this pandemic. 
When the first case of COVID-19 was recorded on the 12th of March 2020, the Guinean authorities produced a contingency plan which became the National COVID-19 Preparedness and Response Plan in order to better coordinate and strengthen the interventions of the state and the capacities of the healthcare system. The implementation of the contingency plan required measures including continued testing and vaccination, increasing the number of vaccine sites, the establishment of a vaccination strategy that prioritized school people, students and households and respect for distancing measures. With the support of bilateral and multilateral partners, the Republic of Guinea, with its own funds, tried to improve the vaccine rate. However, in the face of the scale of the challenge, it called for the international community's support so that the entire population of Guinea could have access to vaccines. And Guinea would like to thank all donors that kindly assisted it in this difficult phase. Ladies and gentlemen, Beyond the COVID-19 pandemic, poverty in all its forms and dimensions, hunger, climate change, terrorism, irregular immigration, violent extremism, intolerance, racism, conflicts of all sorts and inequalities continue to assail the world. These scourges are dampening our hopes and require sustained attention and a vigorous response. It goes without saying that peace and security is being undermined in different places around the world despite the efforts made by the international community. The Sahel region has for some time now seen an increase in terrorist attacks. Armed groups present in border zones continue to aggrieve the population and weaken state institutions. This is an opportunity for us to reiterate our complete support for the actions of the G5 Sahel Joint Force and to reiterate the appeal for heightened assistance from the international community. The situation in the Middle East remains worrying. Settling the Israeli-Palestinian conflict will require the creation of two states living side by side within safe and internationally recognized borders from pre-1967. In Haiti, the killing of President Jovenel Moïse remains etched in our memories. We reiterate our deep-rooted compassion for the people and government of Haiti and invite the international community to mobilize further to help this country which is faced with a cycle of violence and natural disasters. The Republic of Guinea reiterates its constant solidarity to the Cuban people in their legitimate struggle for the lifting of unilateral economic and commercial sanctions that have been imposed upon it for decades. Mr. President, our planet has never been so gravely jeopardized with the fallouts of deforestation, the emissions of greenhouse gas and climate change. As we prepare to meet at the International Climate Conference COP26 in Glasgow in Scotland, my country, which holds the presidency of the Group of 77 in China and has done so since the 18th of January 2021, is concerned by delays in climate financing as well as a failure to respect commitments made by major polluters. As the spokesperson for 134 states, our country intends to play its full role during this global meeting, which will allow us to review global programs aiming at reducing pollution to protect health and to promote national economic recovery plans. We can never stress enough the need for support from developed countries to developing countries who are the main victims of climate uh, of global warming and we would like to take the opportunity of speaking here to express our sincere gratitude to all member states that have uh, placed their trust in our country to lead this important group whose role is even greater in defending the rights of developing countries mr president on the 5th of september the national committee of the rally for development the cnrd under the leadership of his excellency colonel mamadi dumbuya um, took charge of the destiny of the republic of guinea since taking over the reins, the CNRD has reiterated its commitment to all of Guinea's international obligations and has extended a hand of collaboration towards the international community. With the firm desire to meet the legitimate aspirations of the people of Guinea for peace and democratic progress, the CNRD on the 14th of September 2021 launched national consultations which should lead to an inclusive and peaceful transition and a return to constitutional order. These consensus-based consultations and the real enthusiasm for that is a reason for hope will allow for the elaboration of a transition roadmap, including the establishment of a government of national unity, the revision of the electoral role, the elaboration of a new constitution and the organization of free, equitable and universally accepted elections. The CNRD has already taken measures to ease tensions in the socio-political and economic situation, including the release of people who were arrested during opposition demonstrations, reopening the air, land and maritime borders of the country to ensure the freedom of movement of persons and goods and to promote good neighborly relations. Measures have been taken to allow political parties and civil society to freely carry out their activities. 
in order to ensure that no one is left behind. The CNRD has invited the Guinean diaspora, wherever they may be, to make their, their contribution to building strong and lasting institutions. In this historic undertaking of rebuilding the nation, the new Guinean authorities call for the support of all bilateral and multilateral partners in order to make Guinea a country that truly has the rule of law. Mr. President, in our shared struggle to build a new world, Guinea attaches a great importance to the promotion of multilateralism, which is the only thing that can lead humanity towards a better tomorrow within the context of a reformed, revitalized and more democratic UN, which, can, which is conducive to inclusive and solidarity-based cooperation. The issue of Africa's representation within the Security Council must be resolved for efficiency and effectiveness regions both for the effectiveness of our organization and for the justice that must be done for Africa and Africans. In this regard, my delegation reiterates its full support for the common African position contained in the Ezelwini Consensus and the Seert Declaration. It is a question of shared prosperity and peace around the world, and Guinea, as in the past, will spare no effort in order to make its modest contribution to bringing about a world of peace, justice and solidarity. Thank you. I thank the chair of the delegation of Guinea.